somebody in the government explained how this would have worked well, but they acknowledged that the mathematical formulas were so sophisticated and so complicated that they did not have the people who could make the sorts of counting and decisions that they needed at that time. Because the Moroccan at the Moroccans at that time said to show that we have shafafia, trans transparency, or transparency, um, we will give the elections very quickly, the results. They could not. Uh, not out of playing with them, but simply because there were so few people who could who could figure out the formulas when it came to be the time. Uh, and I'd say in this case, because Morocco is open, we can see more about what it takes in terms of transformations. If you're having a small village election with 800 ballots, perhaps it's a little bit easier. But when you're talking <clears throat> even about a small country, Morocco has 34 million inhabitants. Um, it's not that small, but smaller compared to others. It takes a lot more work to make things believable and really open and democratic. Uh, it's starting, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be very fast. Una, una última cuestión. ¿Qué le diría a la gente que, que teme al Islam porque ve que el Islam es la excusa para actuar para muchos terroristas? Could you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, what do you think about the people who are af uh, afraid from the Islam? Because they see that the terrorists, Al Qaeda, and other terrorists, uh, uses the Islam as the justification, as the, as the uh, they base their action in Islam. A lot of people are in, uncomfortable with different things. I am old enough so that I can remember how everybody was uncomfortable with Soviets and communists. And if you wanted to ruin the career of somebody, you would say, you think they are a communist. And their career would be ruined. I had to sign, when I began teaching in the United States, a statement in the city of New York saying, I was never a member of the Communist Party. I did not want to sign it, but I was politely told. I said, I've never been, but I don't like this sort of thing. I was told, well, here's your choice. You can have a job, or you can be unemployed. And I would regard that as pressure. Um, a lot of people have been, I think, very frightened by things they don't think they know well. And these days, Islam is one thing that people don't. I think that if most people, be they Spanish, or French, or American, or others, look around them. They will find lots of Muslim associations, Muslims in the workplace, Muslims at different levels, uh, uh, and, and uh, they will see that Islam is not just one thing and Muslims are not just one thing. But there is a resistance uh, to uh, trying to learn more <clears throat> or feeling that one should change more. I've seen this with other sorts of things before. Uh, in American history, it was the Irish who were regarded as the revolutionaries, the unreliable, the ones who could never participate fully in society. Later, it was the Catholics, because in the elections for John Kennedy uh, in 1964, um, one slogan used in the American South was, a vote for John Kennedy is a vote for the Pope, suggesting that the Pope would call everything. Now that may sound comical, looked at from today, but it reminds us how there are people who will play on prejudices and try in their own way to, to shape conversations so people don't look further. Uh, many people are comfortable with stereotypes, that's unfortunate, but um, they're unreasonably optimistic because I've seen this sort of transformation in other, in other areas too. Y una última cuestión. <coughs> eh, sobre el tema de Irán. ¿Cómo ve el futuro de Irán? ¿Qué pasa? ¿Cree que es posible que la oposición, si haga con el poder, eh, cambie 
el país eh, se atreve con una opinión sobre el futuro de Irán, el futuro inmediato. For the long term, I think that Iran will be a better place, but watch what I say, because long term means I can't give a date. Um, a few years ago, I would have said that the nature of the change in the Iranian economy and other things would mean that the government is stepping aside and allowing private initiatives and commerce and many other things. Some would argue that when you let people be good traders and be good businessmen, businessmen and traders don't like extremism. Uh, they don't like militias. It's very bad for business. And uh, smuggling is good for business sometimes, but not violence. And um, I'm less optimistic now because the, the, the uh, uh, revolutionary guards are not, it's not just an organization, it's an organization with extended, complicated networks of family to religious clerics and others who don't want change. These can stay for a very long time. But sometimes things happen overnight. I, I know this is a bad analogy for a non-Spaniard to use in Spain. Uh, but a few years ago, many of us thought, how is it that Spain changed so fast after the death of Franco? Uh, is the same thing going to happen with Morocco now that uh, this is in 19... Uh, with the death of King Hassan when we thought of that. <clears throat> and the answer my Spanish colleagues gave was a very good one. If you look at Spain in the last years of Franco, businesses had changed, the economy had, had, had massive transformations. Some parts of the state remained frozen almost in time, but everything else had moved ahead so quickly that then it would look as if the political part had moved fast too, but it was really a model. And I might add, Spain has been a model in different ways for Morocco for many years. Not just the big picture, uh, but the smaller one of regional autonomy has been, uh, has been a model as well. Not saying that we must do what Spain does, but having people in Morocco speak to me showing that they know much more than I do about about the way Spain has moved towards regional autonomy in some regions. Resumiendo, esa transformación del Islam en las sociedades contemporáneas va a dar frutos pronto o tardará mucho en verse esos resultados. I'm an anthropologist and there was once an American senator who thought that anthropology was astrology, which is why he invited me to dinner. Uh, I think he was disappointed that I couldn't, I couldn't predict the future. I think you'll see some positive things, but it's like the peaceful transitions in Indonesia of the late 1990s. Nobody predicted that they would be peaceful. Nobody knew that once they started, the way that the Indonesians, including the military, decided to handle things, things went smoothly. Uh, I'm an optimist, so I think that we will see some good surprises, uh, but not all surprises are good ones. <laughs>